Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb. He is the reason we are here this morning. What a mighty God we serve. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Our Lord is worthy. And worthy to be praised. And we give Him all the glory and honor. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bible this morning for a quick meditation. The sec- uh, uh, episode of 2 Peter, chapter number 1, verses 4 through 10. We'll read verses 4 through 10, but I would like to dwell on verse number 10. But I would like to read, ask you to read verses 4 through 10. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruptions that is in the world through lust. I want you to repeat after me, that you might be partakers of the divine nature. Verse number five. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and virtue knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, repeat after me on verse number 8. The knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Very important. Verse number 9. He that lacketh the above things is blind and cannot see far. He's got, he's short-sighted and hath forgotten That he was born again. And forgotten that he was born again. Forgotten that he is a child of God. Verse 10. Pay very close attention to verse number 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Praise the Lord. Very, very powerful word of the Lord. And I thank God for this verse that Apostle Peter have written and gave to us. I'll go through the background of this and then I'll go trusting the Lord to speak through me to bring blessings to every one of you that bring glory to the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you and thank you for your presence here. Lord, we thank you for this eternal word, the very powerful word of God that you gave us. Help us to grow according to your plan yes, and to have the divine nature yes. to be, help us to be partakers of the divine nature Amen. Praise the Lord. because knowing that that will help us to escape the corruptions that is in this world Lord we praise you and we thank you that you are reminding us that we are washed by the precious blood of Jesus help us not to forget that So we can be victorious in our Christian life. Lord, help us to make our calling and election sure. As your coming is so near, help us live for you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen Amen and amen. So I just uh, trust the Holy Spirit to speak to every one of you through this powerful word of God written by Apostle Peter. Again, verse number 10. Wherefore... The rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. We are living in a a wicked world. Tensions and pressures are out there. Sometimes we feel like we are so discouraged. I'm going to use the three three D three uh, D words: the discouragement, disappointment, depression. So if you are in a situation that you are so discouraged, you are so disappointed, and you are in a position that will lead you to depression, remember one word that will give you hope. 
what is that word hope hope is the one word that you should always remember i have hope i have a blessed hope i have hope in christ jesus who is better fit to write this epistle than apostle peter he came to a position i had to say in his life in his life journey in the early days he was so excited to do anything for jesus whatever jesus say he will do if jesus walk on water he will want to walk on water peter is the only man that walked on water other than jesus that we know at least he walked on water even though he fell down after that but he did but later on in his life he made a commitment no matter what will happen i will always be there for you jesus peter he said no matter what happen i will be there what did jesus say luke's gospel chapter 22 verse 61 and 62 it tells something happened and jesus said before the cock crows you will deny me three times peter denies jesus three times and later on we see that he went out and cried bitterly because he really was in a hopeless situation and i believe peter is the best person best apostle to write this to bring us hope in this last days we are living in and as he was hopeless i have to say the lord jesus brought hope in his life as jesus christ rose from the dead we read in mark's gospel chapter 16 and verse 7 Jesus said something to about his resurrection about go tell the disciples and then it says that and also Peter the name spelled out there go tell Peter that I am resurrected Amen. that brought hope in his life Amen. that brought hope in his life yes. so i believe what we are studying today second epistle of peter we see some things peter have written but i want to give you a theme of uh, first peter first peter the whole epistle the theme is hope in the time of trial or suffering you can go home and study chapter 1 through the last chapter in first epistle you will see mainly it will bring hope in the time of your suffering but when he is writing chapter 2 he is saying that in order for to face challenges in your life in because he's an experienced apostle now he's writing in order to face challenges that is coming in your way or the last days of apostasy and the storms of life will come you must know jesus the knowledge about the savior jesus again peter wants everyone to know him apostle paul has said that i might know my lord jesus and the fellowship fellowship of his suffering apostle paul's desire was to know jesus peter's desire is to know jesus so knowing jesus and knowing about jesus are two different things many people know about jesus but question to you is do you know jesus so peter is known as the apostle of hope paul is known as the apostle of faith john is known as the apostle of love so these three epistles epistles written by paul will give you faith when you read the apostle uh, apostles writing the peter is writing it will bring hope in your life when you read the writing of apostle john it will bring love faith hope and love that will sustain us according to the word of the lord all those who have accepted jesus christ as their personal savior we call them born again they are known as born again children of god or they are known as children of god uh, born again we call them believers sometimes we say the saints of god or known as saints born again children are saints when paul is writing epistle to the epistle to the saints in uh, so and so city saints in so and so churches saints in detroit because that means you are a saint when because you are born again you are a saint not a saint when you are dead you are a saint when you are living so we have that privilege to be known as saint of god 
or we are known as the church of god those who are born again there are many titles in the word of god believers children of god born again child right and also uh, that you are a saint or or, or you are a church there is one more thing that is a title given to the born again do you know what that is it is known as the called ones called so everyone has a call upon their life everyone in this whole world has a call in their life but many do not accept the call the moment you are accepted the call you are the called one matthew chapter 11 verse 28 jesus is calling the whole world says come to me all if you have never underlined that you can underline come to me all that means the whole world the whole mankind can come to me in the time of your trouble in the time when you are heart is heavy when you are restless you come to me the lord's arms are wide open the strong loving arms are wide open and he's calling and those who heed the call respond to the call and accept him as the personal savior are the one known as the called one all those who are responded to the call are accepted those are accepted as the called ones second timothy chapter 1 uh, uh, verse number 9 we see different kind of calling Uh, 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 second timothy chapter 1 verse 9 it says that you has received a higher calling in your life high calling so it's not just a normal call a higher calling and philippians chapter 3 verse 14 uh, also uh, sorry uh, uh, second timothy chapter 1 verse 9 it says holy calling you have a holy calling it's a not just any kind of call holy calling Philippians chapter 3 verse 14 it says it's a high calling and God's calling in your life is not just any kind of normal calling it's a high calling you have a special position it's a higher call than any other call in the epistle of uh, Timothy you see that your calling is different than the calling of this world you have a, a saintly call meaning holy call Philippians say it's a higher call call from above you have a call higher call in your life when you come to hebrew chapter 3 verse 1 you will see that that calling in your life is a heavenly calling it's a heavenly calling in other words when you are called you are you have a a holy calling you have a, a higher calling in your life and you have a heavenly calling in your life what a privilege it is to know or to realize that you have a calling in your life i want to ask you that do you know that you have a calling in your life if you know that you have a calling in your life this is what apostle peter is saying in verse number 10 chapter 1 second epistle therefore the rather brother give diligence to make your calling and election sure you must know you have to make sure of your calling everyone has a call in their life as i said many do not accept the call those who have accepted the call have this privilege it's a great privilege yes. here in uh, uh, chap uh, uh, second epistle of peter chapter 1 apostle peter is exhorting believers to be spiritually victorious in their life in these last days for to be spiritually victorious one must make every effort to follow the spiritual qualities listed from verse 5 through verse number 8 so that qualities only can come to you by staying close to the lord jesus christ and to know him not just know about him when you know him you're going to be victorious because you know the mind of god yes. you know the way of god you will know him and the glory of the lord will be revealed and holy spirit will equip you to be an overcomer in this world jesus called ordinary fishermen and tax collectors and they have they had the call jesus said come follow me and they they accepted the call 
and later on we see this just a regular fisherman and just a normal uh, uh, tax collectors, just ordinary men. And they were equipped by the Holy Spirit to do extraordinary miracles because they have, they have acknowledged the special call in their life. Three things about this call that I want to point out to you this morning through my talk. Number one, you are called for his purpose. You have a purpose in your life even though you probably may not realize. God called you for a purpose. Number two, you must live according to your call and to fulfill the purpose in your life. Number three, with that call, the, the higher call, the holy call, the heavenly call, you must serve him according to that call. God called you not because you are a good person. God did not call you because of your good works. God called you while you were a sinner and he called you for his purpose. He knew who you are when he called you. He knew what type of person you are, what kind of flaws in your life, but he wanted that flaw person, a person with the flaw, make them a flawless person. Knowing who you are, he called. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to your works, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. Before the world began, he had your name. He called you by your name. He knew what you are and who you are going to be, knowing he called. Here on earth, people call with a different purpose and diff knowing, different, uh, knowing the difference about you. People call you because of your qualification. A corporation will not just call anybody and everybody on the street. They know this person is fit to our company. This person is fit to our hospital. This person is fit, perfect fit for our organization. They check everything about you. Even these days, they even check the Facebook to find out what your history was when you were a young teenage boy or girl. So I tell uh, youngsters, be careful when you are going through Facebook. Social media is going to be kept out there as a permanent record. When you go for a job interview, they will look at the writing that you have done. Knowingly or unknowingly, you may not know. You do things, but they know what you've done. They call you based on what your past. They don't call you based on your future. They are calling you based on their future. For their future, knowing that your past was good to fit their future. But God, God call is not knowing your flaws in your life in the past. He called you for your future. If you don't accept the call, it doesn't matter to him. It is matter to us. Our future is what the Lord is interested. This world will call you because of your good works in the time past. What you have accomplished. You have a, we call it a resume. It will say that 10 years I worked for this organization. And 15 years I did this for this organization. And 5 years I did this for this organization. They say, oh, look at this man has all this experience. Hopefully you are not 65 yet. And then say, okay, you are fit for this. Even you are 65 or 75, some organization will hire you. Right? They, the world organization call you because you are a good person. Some even call you because of your good looks. Yes. Good looks. I believe all creation of God is good. The Bible says, the Lord said, it's all good in the book of Genesis. Whatever he created is good. There is no flaw in his creation. So, this world only evaluates you according to your past. Our God knows your past and take you for your future. So, Matthew chapter 9 verse 13, Jesus Christ said, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The moment the sinners come into repentance and that moment you are known as the called one. How many organizations that you know when they call you, 
you take the equipment, all the laptop and your uh, screwdrivers or uh, the things from home to the company. Nobody do that. They provide you everything. Yes. Right? Yes. When they call you. Our God is the same God. He equipped or he equip you. You don't have to come with all your equipment. You just come just as you are. Just if a sinner come just as a sinner and say, Lord Jesus, I am a wretched sinner. Have mercy on me. He will have mercy on you. Jesus said, I come to call the uh, sinners to repentance. When he calls the sinner to repentance, that repenting sinner, he will sanctify that sinner. So the called are sanctified. The called are justified. You don't have to live in the past. You live in the present. Knowing the future is going to be bright. Because you are justified the moment you are called. The book of Romans says that therefore being justified by faith. You don't have to look at the verse. It's, just, uh, it's in the word of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God. You are justified by faith in Christ. There is nothing you need to do. Yes. This morning we must have the assurance of our call. When you have the assurance of the call means you have the assurance of salvation. What does uh, Apostle Peter say about those people don't know that? What, do they, what, what does he call? Verse number 9. Those who don't have that assurance, he lacketh these things, is blind, and he or she is short-sighted. Cannot see far off. Hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. That person doesn't have the assurance. Always this way or that way. You can fall maybe this side or you can fall this side. Confused person. Double minded person. Bible says double minded person are unstable in all their ways. Let us be a person. With the confidence knowing I have the call in my life. I am called when I was a sinner. I'm called not because I was good. I was a bad person. He called me and made me good. He justified me. Therefore being justified by faith in Christ Jesus. You have peace. If anybody don't have peace in their life. I'm going to ask you to come to him and say Lord Jesus. Wash me with the precious blood. He will not only sanctify you. He will justify you. He will justify you and then at the end all those who are justified are glorified. The moment you accept Jesus Christ's call, he make you a new person. All past is past. He will remember no more your sins. We will remember, but he will not remember. He will forgive and forget. Romans chapter 8 verse 30 Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he justified. And them he justified, also glorified. What the Lord says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Do you feel that you are a new person in Christ Jesus? If not, today is the day you must have the assurance that I am new in Christ Jesus. All my past is gone. It says, behold, all things are become new. How about you? Did all become new? Yes. Or sometimes you just vomit out the old? <laughs> I hope not. Right. Come on, old, bad things are gone. The new things are in. Because you are called according to the purpose. All things happening in your life is for good. Whether it's bad or good. Amen. You may think it's bad. But the end, end the result God knows what is best for you. Yes. You only see bad with your own eyes. Because we are a people even though we say we walk by faith. But we mainly walk by sight. That's what Bible says. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. But we, in our reality, when the reality comes, we walk by sight, not by faith. Right? All the believers, all those who are called, must walk by faith. 
At that moment, you will know all things that are happening in my life is for my good because my Lord knows me. My God called me. That's what the Bible says. All things work together for good according to them who are called according to his purpose. He knows all about you when he called you. God did not make a mistake by calling you. He is not sorry that he called you. Some people will say, I am so sorry I hired you in my organization. I didn't think you are this person. Because you are this person is why God called you to make you the best person. He is never sorry for his call. He will never repent that he called you. He is so proud that he called and you accepted the call. Romans chapter 11 verse 29, it says, For the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. Every believer must realize that you are a special person, selected for the purpose of the Almighty God. Yes. Every one of you are seated here are a special person. Yes. Even if somebody thinks you are not special, you are special. Yes, Lord. God you. loves you. Even if nobody loves you, God loves you. Yes. Jesus loves you. Jesus sees value in you. He paid a great price on the cross of Calvary. He gave his life on the cross for you. Because you are a special person. Do you not feel special? I feel I'm a special person. That's why I'm standing here. There are many people he could have made to stand here. Why God, sometimes I think, why God selected me to come and stand here? Because I believe because of his mercy and his grace. Not because of my ability. I was a person that, who is so afraid of the crowd. I was a person, sh- always, I used to have both my knees shaking when I stand before the crowd. I remember when I was young, I stood before a youth meeting. My both knees were shaking and halfway through I sat down. People all made fun of me and laughed at me. But today, by his mercy, I say the Lord so value in me to stand here to talk to you from the word of God to encourage you this day. Those who are disappointed, discouraged and dis- depressed. Word of the Lord says he wants to encourage you. He wants to lift you up. He wants to fill you with the joy of the Lord in your life because you are special. When you realize this, every depression, every disappointment and every discouragement will just vanish from your life. This is what Apostle Peter is trying to get across. Because he went through problems in his life. He just wants to bring hope and knowledge in your life. And I, I wish and I hope that every one of you hear me this morning will have that knowledge. And knowing that you are called for a purpose. You are a special person. When you know that all your mindset about yourself being low will go away. You say, I am a special person. And he will make sure he will fill your life with the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. First Peter chapter, five, chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. In other words, it says that the one who called you is holy. In every walk of your life, the walk that you walk and the talk that you talk must be holy. The things that you do must be holy. The next verse, it is written that, Be holy, for I am holy. Two things are very important in our life as we are called. Two things, very important. When you accepted the call, you are known as one in the family of God. The one holy one uh, have called you. He called you the holy calling. He called you the higher calling. His purpose, two things that we should know is that number one, you be holy. Number two, be faithful. Two things. Holiness and faithfulness are the two things the Lord is looking from you. In every areas of your life, know who you are. Make sure of your calling. Make sure of your calling in your life. I am a saint of God. I have to be holy unto God. 
in everything that you do and also be faithful these are the two things we must have the character that we must have in our life the two attributes in our life two things in our life i want to be holy and faithful first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 for god has not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness as a believer are you living a holy life are you walking worthy of your call let us examine ourselves as we are making sure of our calling with his calls come some important responsibilities first peter chapter 2 verse 9 onwards we see you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into marvelous light yes. what the writer is saying here peter is saying that that you are a special person yes. you are a royal priesthood why you are called that you should show forth the praises of him who called you from darkness in the marvelous light the book of psalm david wrote like this that when i was deep down in the miry clay deep down in the the deepest pit he cried unto the lord he heard his cry the lord heard his cry he inclined where, where did the lord he inclined his ear unto his cry he came and lifted him up set his feet on a rock a solid rock and it says establish his going and then he says that then he put a new song in his mouth that means the old song is gone the new song is coming out from your heart what kind of song that we are singing these days what kind of praises are coming from our our heart it says that you must uh, uh, show for the praises of him who called you from darkness into marvelous light verse 10 same chapter it says which in time past you were not people but are now the people of god you were far away from his presence now he are you are in his presence now you are his people you didn't have mercy but now you have obtained mercy verse 11 dearly beloved i beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul there's a war going on that is only for your soul at that time let the holy spirit encourage you the one who called you is perfect the one who called you is holy the one who called you is faithful you must proclaim his glory and his goodness to others there are not enough words in our mouth to proclaim his glory and goodness this is our responsibility you are to proclaim the goodness and the glory not your goodness and not your glory paul says in me there is no good things we cannot proclaim our goodness and our glory jesus must be revealed through your life when others see you let them see jesus in you apostle john heard a call that we read in the book of revelation chapter 4 verse 1 after this i looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as it were a trumpet taking with talking with me which said come up here apostle john was in the isle of patmos on the day of the lord he was fill, filled with the holy full of holy spirit he heard a call come up here i'll show you things here after there is awaiting a final call to all the believers who have accepted the call those who are called there is a final call coming that we read in the epistle of first, uh, first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 and 17 for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout that shout is the call the same shout we hear we we read in the book of john chapter number 11 when Jesus came to the tomb of uh, Lazarus he called Lazarus to come out that same shout he shouted Lazarus come out but there is a call final call that is waiting for every believers and the lord will come into the clouds with the shout 
with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god where the lord says and the dead in christ shall rise first verse 17 then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we we ever be with the lord trumpet of the lord will sound so soon and the shout will be accompanied at that time that shout we sing when the roll is called up yonder that shout your name will be called will you hear that call will you hear your name called at that time only those who have accepted the call today will hear that call that day that day the call is not for everyone today the call is for the whole world come to me come to me with the problems come to me with all your flaws come to me oh sinner i will save you that day he will only call the one who are received the call or the called ones are receiving the call when the roll is called up yonder will you be there that is the final call are you sure about your salvation as peter says make sure with all diligence your calling and your elections are sure make sure of your calling and your election have you accepted your his call one day if you did you will hear that final call on that day when the roll is called up yonder you can say i will be there my question to every one of my hearers will you be there do you have the assurance of the call if you are not don't have that assurance that day my name will be will not be if you don't have the assurance of that call that day your name will have, will be in that list you should have the assurance today if you have the assurance today that you have accepted the call or you responded to the call and accepted that day your name will be in that list that time nobody come and ask for salvation bible says today is the day today is the now is the time now is the acceptable time anyone and everyone can come because the call is out there echoing so peter is saying wherefore my brethren give all diligence to make sure of your calling and election for if you do all these things you shall not fall if you have not responded to the call i'm giving an opportunity to make that response today if you accept the call you will hear the last call let us all stand before the lord and examine our heart do you have the assurance of your salvation if you have never said lord come into my heart if you have never said just as i am i am coming this is an opportunity that i'm going to give you this is a precious opportunity this is a golden opportunity do not pass by the call of the lord jesus christ with the strong loving arms because he loves you so much he just want you to respond to his call you have nothing that you need to do other than say lord jesus i am responding to your call if you respond to your call and say i am sorry for my sin because i know i am a sinner and ask him that i repent of my sin and wash me with the blood he will wash you with the blood of jesus that will give you the assurance that you responded to the call after the worship sings the worship team sings i'll come and help you to make that uh, 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 prayer for in response to your call let us sing and worship For the winter chill has gone The springtime rivers rise Before the setting sun has disappeared The moon is rising high While time waits for no man Seasons come and go one in the midst 
of a never changing world Here's one thing I know You've got to live every moment As though it was your last Before the thief of always Steals tomorrow from your grasp the chance to know his love has somehow passed you by let your heart reach out right here right now for the Lord to touch your life you've got to live every moment as though it was your last before always steals tomorrow from your grass before the chance to know his love has somehow passed you by let your heart reach out right here right now for the Lord to touch your life Praise the Lord. Take a moment, examine your life. Apostle Peter went through life's low point in his life, but the Lord Jesus brought hope in his life. He wrote this to help all the believers living in this day till the coming of the Lord. This is our opportunity to know Him and bring hope in your life. Let the Holy Spirit help you to know Him more day by day. Know His will. Know His ways and to see His glory. He can use you if you know Him. Would you pray this prayer with me? Saying, Lord, I know I am a sinner. I want to repent. I want to come to you. Would you pray? If you do, I'm going to help you to pray that prayer. Lord Jesus, you came not for the righteous to seek and to save the sinners. I am one among them. I know I am a sinner. I lived a sinful life. I am sorry for my sin. I repent of my sins. Wash me with your precious blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary. Come into my heart. I open my heart for you. I live for you the rest of my life. Thank you for giving me the assurance of salvation. Thank you for accept, uh, accepting me as just as I am. Father, I thank you that through Jesus, you gave me the salvation. And I praise and thank God for sending your only son. Jesus, I thank you that you died for me. I thank you that you took me in. And I thank you that you wrote my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are born again. You are known as the called one. With the high calling, with the heavenly calling, with the precious call that is in your life. And may God bless you to lead a victorious life. Coming closer to Jesus day by day. Walk with him. Talk with him. Let him guide you and to get to know him by surrendering your life. May Holy Spirit help you to be victorious. Let me pray. Father, I praise you and I thank you for all the one who made that commitment this morning. I thank you that your love found this one who prayed that prayer. Lord, I thank you that you gave them eternal life. And no one will take that away from them. And I praise you and I thank you for speaking to us to make sure of our calling and election. Help us to be victorious and knowing that we have a call in our life to be holy unto you and be faithful in all our ways. Lord, we know that you're looking for holiness and faithfulness. So, so, so we yield our life for that. I thank you that you are going to help us by the power of the Holy Spirit to be 
faithful and holy unto you. I thank you that you heard my prayer. And I bless everyone who heard the message in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. May the love of God the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, come in and all the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forever. Amen.